The question you're all probably asking is if it's worth it to get the new iPhone 14. And the answer is yes and no. If you're looking to buy the iPhone 14, then I suggest getting the iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, which I have right here, because this phone offers tons of new features like the dynamic island and other improvements that the standard iPhone 14 and previous iPhones don't have. With that being said, I'm gonna be walking through all the new features and improvements that come with this new iPhone 14 Pro. And at the end of this video, you can decide if you think it's worth it. So let's dive right into it. The iPhone 14, you'll notice it has a very similar body to previous iPhones, like the iPhone 13, for example. We have our notifications control right here on the left side. And if I flip it towards me, this means that my notifications are gonna be turned on and you'll hear sound coming out of your iPhone. But if I flip it like this, you're gonna see this orange tab and that signals that your notifications are turned off and it'll just vibrate instead. And then usually this is where the SIM card tray is, but the iPhone 14 has a new approach with SIM cards. I'll dive into that later. So if we go look at the bottom of the phone, you're gonna see this is where the charger goes into right here. The iPhone 14 is also MagSafe compatible like the iPhone 13. So you can actually get a MagSafe charger and place it right on the back of the phone and you can charge your product or iPhone this way. I definitely recommend using it because it's a hassle using wires all the time. And it also charges fast, if not faster as a wired charger. So you can use any MagSafe safe chargers with your iPhone 14, no worries there. And then we're looking at the back of the screen right here. We have the three cameras and the flashlight. The iPhone 14 has improved camera quality and I'll dive into that later, but this is basically the body of the iPhone. Now let's take off this covering and see what the front looks like. The newest and biggest feature for the iPhone 14 is this addition of the dynamic island, which is located right here. And basically this is a combination of hardware and software that will bubble up when you receive notifications, phone calls, listen to music, and so much more. I'm gonna be diving into tons of details about the dynamic island and what it has to offer. So stick around and I'll show you guys all what dynamic island is about later on in this video. Since we are on the clock app, I actually wanna show you a cool feature that's linked with the dynamic island I mentioned earlier in this video. And I wanna show you how this comes into action for example when we start a timer right here so if we want to start a timer for 30 minutes and we click start right here if we exit the app you're going to see the dynamic island come into action with this timer so if i exit out you're going to see right here on the top of my iphone with the dynamic island it's actually going to show me how much time i have left on that timer right here at the top of my screen which i think is a super cool feature for the iphone 14 and if we click on it again it's going to take us to the timer and that clock app so this is one feature that is really cool with the dynamic island and the clock app on your iphone 14 you exit out and now you're going to see your timer at all times when you're doing other stuff on your iphone and it is super cool and i wanted to show you guys that but let's go back to the control center now i also want to show you another feature with the dynamic island on this iphone 14 because i think it is so cool so say you want to play a song for example if i go to my playlist and click this song i'm just going to turn down the volume so we don't hear it and if we exit out of the music app, you're gonna see right at the top, it's gonna to show that music playing through my home screen on my iPhone, not on the music app. So I think this is super cool and you can actually see what you're listening to right here at the dynamic island. And if you wanna go back to that, you just tap that right here. It's gonna take you back to the music app, showing you the song right here. Then if we exit out and then hold down again, you're gonna be able to have the option to click and go to different songs that are on your playlist as well. And you also have the option if you click right here, you're gonna choose what that audio is gonna come out of. Right now it's only my iPhone, but if you have a pair of headphones, it'll come out of those as well. And if we go back right here, you're gonna see you can skip, go back, pause, and then you can do anything you want essentially with this dynamic island and your iPhone. I think it's super cool and it's really going to come into action when you start using your music, receiving notifications, calls, FaceTimes, whatever that may be, you can use that with the dynamic island on your iPhone 14. So as I previously mentioned, Apple created a new way to go with SIM cards called eSIM. Now essentially what eSIM does, it allows you to conveniently and securely activate cellular service without needing a physical SIM card. So you no longer have to transfer your previous old SIM card into your new iPhone, your eSIM is stored digitally on your iPhone and it reduces the risk of physical damage loss, which is a great improvement for SIM cards and usage of these on your new phone. So we have two options right here, transfer from another iPhone or set up later in settings. I'm just gonna transfer to another iPhone right now and I'm gonna transfer my number. And after you put in a few minor details like your card information and all those, It'll take you to this page where it says emergency SOS. Now this is a brand new feature for Apple products like the new iPhone 14 and the Apple Watch. And essentially what emergency SOS is, is the iPhone's ready to help in any emergency. So you can press and hold for emergency SOS. All you have to do is just press and hold the side button and either volume button to make an emergency call. We have crash detection. So if the phone detects a severe car crash, it will automatically try and call emergency services. And also coming in fall 2022, they have emergency SOS via satellite 
which is also very new. And when available in select countries, the iPhone can try to text emergency services to the satellite if it cannot connect to cellular. So if you're in a situation, if you're lost, for example, you can actually contact a satellite and you'll be able to send out messages that way, which I think is super innovative and super helpful in certain scenarios. So definitely set this up and let's click continue right here. Also a new feature specifically for the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro is that the screen's always on display. So instead of your phone screen shutting off, the lock screen will always be glanceable so you can see any updates without having to tap anything at all. It's just gonna be darker as you can see right now. But when I pick up my phone like this, you're gonna see it starts to get brighter and goes back to that normal display. So this is a brand new feature on the iPhone 14, but also keep in mind that when it's in my pocket or face down, the screen will go black. So you can save battery, which is something I definitely recommend doing, but this is a great feature for the iPhone 14. It's always gonna be glanceable unless it's in your pocket or it's facing down. iPhone 14 also introduces an all day battery life, which is a brand new feature for this new phone. And it allows up to 23 hours of video playback for the iPhone 14 Pro that I have. And I believe it's 29 hours of video playback for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So this is a great new battery addition for the iPhones. It stays super charged. And remember, you can always just charge it using this right here or using a magnetic charger with a MagSafe compatibility on the back of your screen. But as you can see right now, we have our battery icon right here. And if I scroll down to my control center, you're gonna see it shows the battery percentage. But if you don't wanna see that and you wanna see the specific number right off the bat, you can actually change this in settings. So if we go to settings to change our battery, it's super easy to do. You just go down to battery right here and it's gonna show these options you can choose from. We have battery percentage, which is turned off, but if I turn that on, what I was saying is now you can see the number of that battery percentage right here on this battery icon. It shows 94. I definitely recommend this because in previous iOS updates, they actually show the percentage and they took it away after that. But with iOS 16, you can now have this option to show the battery percentage again. And I like to have that on so I can just see the number so I get an idea of when I need to charge it. Then as I'm sure you guys are all aware, you know of a low power mode, which will turn on and actually help you save battery when your phone's starting to get low and you don't have a charger available to charge your phone at the moment. So using the camera on the iPhone 14 is pretty self-explanatory. You have all these other options to choose from between photo, portrait, panoramic, video, whatever mode you want, you can essentially choose on your camera. And like I said, every year the iPhone gets a better camera. And this time around, the iPhone 14 actually has a 65% larger sensor than the iPhone 13 Pro. So now you can capture anything with better sensor and quality when taking videos or photos. It's super cool. And I love using the cameras on the iPhone because they do a great job at capturing all the depth and displays that you take pictures of. With this iPhone, you can actually take a 24 frames per second video, which is standard to the film industry and taking movies and directing movies that are actually in Hollywood. So it's super cool and actually has a great quality. So if you want to take a video, you actually will see all the high quality that it displays with this new camera on the iPhone 14, but it's pretty self-explanatory on how to use the camera app. All these options to choose from. If you want to turn on flash, you just click that right here. Tons of options you can choose from, but it's pretty cool to check out the camera app and I definitely recommend doing it. Today, I'm super excited to show you the EasyViz cameras, the all new home security system that lets you keep an eye on your home no matter where you are. For a camera with small convenient size that offers big functionality, try the EasyViz C6. And just start off by downloading the EasyViz app and hitting the add device button. From here, you can either select which product you have and enter in the information manually, or you can simply scan the QR code on the pamphlet to immediately sync your camera to the app and connect it to your Wi-Fi network. And with AI powered motion detection, the camera can automatically detect and track people and pets around your house. It also has an auto zoom tracking to follow any suspicious activity. And with voice activity detection, as well as a waving hand recognition and control, people in the house can easily call your phone simply by waving their hands in front of the camera. If you're looking for a camera with different features, try the C8W Pro 2K which comes in a durable weatherproof design, making it a great tool for monitoring the outside of your house. With color vision that you can customize based on your preferences, the C8W Pro camera gives you a crystal clear visual of your property 24 hours a day. The camera also adds both a human and vehicle shape detection, so you can get immediate alerts if a certain person pulls into your driveway or shows up to your front steps and you're not sure who that is. A less expensive alternative to the C8W Pro is the C8C security camera, the smaller but comprehensive outdoor pan and tilt camera. And with so many options and different types of products, these EasyViz cameras are bound to have something for everyone. It'll make your life safer and so much easier. 
With so many awesome features, these EasyViz cameras are fantastic home security tools for your house, both indoors and outdoors. Complete with fully customizable settings, your camera will capture videos in stunning quality that you can access in one secure location on the EasyViz app. So be sure not to miss out on these amazing products and order your EasyViz camera today using the link on the screen or in the description. Enjoy your EasyViz. So the iPhone 14 has a new Super Retina XDR display and as you can see, it is completely incredible. It has such a nice display and aesthetics to this new screen. But I wanna show you a few ways you can customize your display just to get started with your new iPhone 14. But the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do to get started is go to settings and make sure we're updated to iOS 16. And if we're not, make sure we update that right away iOS 16 has just been released offers tons of new features that are all incredible it's personally my favorite software update for Apple and I definitely recommend getting that set up as soon as you can so as you can see we just got the software update in our settings section and we're gonna click download and install right here and throughout this video I'm gonna be showing you tons of features that come with iOS 16 as well as the iPhone 14 but definitely download iOS 16 as fast as you can now since we have iOS 16 updated on our iPhone 14 I want to show you a new feature that comes with it regarding the display and the lock screen for this new iPhone. So now with iOS 16 on your iPhone 14, you can actually change and edit your lock screens without having to go into settings. You can do it right through the lock screen, which makes it super convenient and easy. And they have offered tons of new customizations you can do with these lock screens. So let's dive into all of them. So first, if you wanna edit your lock screen that you currently have, all you have to do is just hold down on it like this and you can click customize right here. So now we have tons of options to choose from, like changing the font, the color, and adding certain widgets. So for example, if I want to change the color of my text right here, I can just click on that and I can choose the font and color. They have offered tons of fonts like all of these right here, tons to choose from. And then you can also slide to choose different colors you want for that specific font. You can choose all of these colors right here and say you don't want to choose any of those colors. You can always just go to this ring right here and choose from a spectrum, grid or sliders. So say for example, I wanna choose a red slider. I can just always move this up or down depending on my preference. And this is one of the colors you can choose, but there's tons to choose from. You can essentially edit your lock screen in any way with all of these colors. And you can also choose what widgets you want to be shown on your lock screen. Right now you can see I have my calendar, the weather, and my battery percentage for my iPhone. But if we tap right here, you can see all the widgets you can add and remove. So say I wanna remove my weather, for example, and I wanna add my alarm clock instead, I can just click that right here and now my 7:45 a.m alarm is going to pop up right on my lock screen then if you want more options to choose from you can choose any of these that you prefer tons of widgets to choose from and i definitely recommend trying them and personalize it to your needs and you can also choose the color of your lock screen so right now we have deep purple which is the color of the iphone that i got but if we just swipe over you're going to see we have gold silver and space black. And if we click these three dots down here, you have the option to have a depth effect as well. This will just show it in more detail, which I definitely recommend because it has an incredible display. And if we click done right here, you're gonna see this option as well. We have the option to set the wallpaper as a pair. So this will be the color and display of my lock screen and my home screen as well. And say you wanna customize your home screen in a different way, there's no worries there. You can actually choose a different option for your home screen, but I'll dive into that later. Now, if you wanna create a new lock screen or switch between lock screens you also all you have to do is just hold down your lock screen you can see i have tons i've already created but if we want to create a new one you can either click this plus button or swipe right here and click add new so by adding new there's tons of wallpapers to choose from we have anywhere from photo shuffle emoji and the featured i'm going to walk you through some of my favorites right now so one of the coolest options i think is the emoji option so you can actually have emojis as your background of your lock screen if you scroll down to this emoji section right here they're going to give you a few that they recommend all of these options, but if you wanna create your own, you just scroll back up to the top like this, click emoji, and now you can choose any emoji that you want and that you like and add that as your lock screen. So for example, this was a combination of emojis I used to create this lock screen right here, and I put it in a blue background, but you can essentially edit your emojis in any way and choose from the options they give you, like this one, for example. Completely up to you, but this is a brand new feature on the wallpapers with iOS 16 that I definitely recommend checking out. And if we go back to create new, I also wanna show you one of my other favorites, which is also the photo shuffle. So with photo shuffle, it's essentially a dynamic set of photos that shuffle as you use your iPhone throughout the day and you can actually change the shuffle frequency so i have mine set to hourly but you can change this right here by choosing on tap lock 
hourly or daily. So I wanna do on tap, for example, and they give me recommended photos to use. So let's click use featured photos right here. So now this is the first photo in my photo shuffle. And if I wanna tap, I can see all the other photos that are gonna be featured in this photo shuffle. As you can see, Apple chose the best pictures I have taken to have as my background. I included nature and cities. And then also on top of this, if you wanna add any widgets or change the font, you can definitely do that as well. And now every time you use this photo shuffle, every time you tap your screen, it's gonna change that lock screen right here. And say you don't want all of these photos that are shown to be featured in this photo shuffle, you can click these three dots right here and you can actually have this photo specifically not featured and you can turn that off. So now this photo won't be featured and you can choose which ones you want to have featured on this lock screen, which I think is super cool. And all these photos are great. So I definitely recommend trying it if you like taking photos and have some high quality ones, you can choose the black and white option, duo tone, color wash, any of these options you can choose from with your lock screen on your iPhone and iOS 16. I wanna show you a few of my options that I've created with this lock screen. So for example, if I swipe right, I actually created a Jon Snow one from Game of Thrones, which I think is super cool for all those Game of Thrones fans out there. I have tons of options I wanna choose from. I have this generic one that they give me. Any iPhone wallpaper you wanna choose, you can essentially add, it's gonna look very nice with a high quality display and great aesthetics on this lock screen for iPhone 14s with iOS 16. You'll also notice on the iPhone 14 and iOS 16, the notifications now appear at the bottom of the screen opposed to covering all the nice displays that you created on the wallpapers. So as you can see, it's located right here. I definitely prefer this way so they're out of my way when I'm looking at my screen, but there's actually a way you can change to go back to the original way notifications were shown. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. We just gotta go to settings right here. And once we're on settings, it's super easy to do. You just wanna go to notifications right here. And as you can see, I have it in list view right here, but you can choose between stack or count. I prefer keeping it as list the way it is. As I can see, my notifications are at the bottom, which are out of the way. So I definitely prefer this, but if you prefer the old way, you can choose any of these options as well. So for example, we have list right now, but I wanna show you what the other ones look like. So if we click list for or count, for example, and we go back to my wallpaper, you're gonna see I have a tab that says one notification opposed to actually showing the notification. And if we just tap that right here, then the notification is gonna pop up. So it's completely out of your way. I prefer the other way, but this is completely up to you. And you can just edit this right in your notification center on your settings. So depending on the lock screen that you have turned on at the moment and set to on your iPhone, you can actually choose a focus mode for that specific wallpaper. So for example, if we hold down this icon right here or this wallpaper, you're gonna see this little tab down here that says focus. So if we click on that, now you can link a certain focus mode with this specific lock screen. For example, say I want for this specific lock screen, I want do not disturb linked with this. So I can turn this on. So now whenever I'm on this specific lock screen, my phone's gonna be in do not disturb mode. As you can see at the bottom on my screen, it says do not disturb. But say I wanna have a different lock screen signal, a different focus mode. If I hold down my phone again and go to this one, for example, and click focus. Now I can have this one in sleep mode. So now whenever I go to sleep, I set my phone to this specific wallpaper, and now it's gonna be in sleep mode for this specific wallpaper when I wanna go to bed. And you can do this with any of your wallpapers that you have. You can just choose a focus mode by linking that and clicking that right here, and just choose whichever one you want on your iPhone 14. I'm gonna turn this off for now, but whenever you wanna link a focus mode, just know you can do that with the lock screen if you have your phone updated to iOS 16 on your iPhone 14. And for sleep mode, as you saw, I linked this specific lock screen with sleep mode on my iPhone 14. And if you click this icon right here, you're gonna see I have sleep turned on until tomorrow at 7.45. Now, I only turn this on at night, so when it actually comes to 7.45 a.m. in the morning, it'll actually shut off sleep mode and my phone will be back to normal with its normal screen, just like this. So for example, so if you like to spend time on your phone, before you go to bed, but you know it's time to go to sleep, you can just turn on this sleep icon right here. Your phone's gonna go black and it's gonna ask you if you wanna go in to go on your phone before doing so because you're in sleep mode. So I definitely recommend turning that on before you go to bed. It's very helpful when going to bed. And also if you pair this with night mode, like I previously showed you in the control center, you can actually prevent any eye damage and get a great night's sleep with the help of your iPhone 14. Also, just remember you can go to the control center and choose any of these options right here through that. But this is a little bit about the do not disturb modes you can choose on your iPhone 14 with iOS 16. You can always create a new focus mode right here and you can choose specific categories you wanna focus on. You can custom, driving, fitness, gaming, anything you wanna do, you can actually create a focus mode for that specific focus 
on your iPhone 14. So we'll dive into that later, but that's one way you can edit and customize your focus mode in your control center or on your lock screen with your iPhone 14. If you're still using old fashioned, slow charging and messy lightning charging cables, it is time for you to say goodbye to those. Your phone has incredible MagSafe technology built right into it, which allows you to wirelessly and magnetically charge your devices. If you're going to invest so much money into an iPhone, then you should be giving yourself a premium experience, which all starts with something that you need to do every day, and that is charging your actual device. Get the absolute most out of your iPhone with Elgear's 2-in-1 Lightning Charging Stand. This stand allows you to magnetically and wirelessly charge both your iPhone and your AirPods simultaneously. Place your phone anywhere on the sleek charging stand and you're going to feel that magnet automatically attach right to your phone. Elgear wanted to make sure that you can use your phone for all of its uses without having to take it off the stand, which is why they included dual coil technology so you can use your phone both vertically and horizontally in landscape mode. This means that you can still send your messages, emails, or anything else, or you can flip your phone sideways and watch your favorite videos and movies while your phone is still being charged in the background. This stand is made with the highest quality materials like metal and tempered glass, and they also put non-slip silicone on the bottom of the stand. Elgear used official MagSafe technology, so you never need to worry about your phone falling off the stand or having to fidget around with your phone to get it in the right position. As I already mentioned, this is a two-in-one lightning charging stand, so you can charge two devices at the same time by using the second wireless charger on the back of this stand. This is perfect for charging a pair of headphones or even a second iPhone. Wait no longer and finally go upgrade your charging experience by going to lgear.com, stop using those old fashioned slow charging and messy lightning cables and upgrade to the two in one lightning charging stand that's perfect for your desk or your nightstand and it's also being sold at an incredibly discounted rate. So go to lgear.com, the link's on the screen and down in the description, enjoy. So texting using iMessage on your iPhone is pretty self explanatory and I'm sure you all have a good idea of how to use it, but with iOS, 16, there's some brand new features on the iOS update that you can actually use with text message. And one of those is to be able to unsend or edit text messages after you send them. And I want to show you how to do this because it's about time they brought this feature to text message. I think it's super cool and it's very useful. So I want to show you how this works. So if I type in hi right now and click send, all I have to do is just hold down on that sent message and I have the option to undo send or edit send. So I'm gonna click undo send right here and now that's gonna disappear and the person I sent that message to, they won't see that text message either. It will be completely erased. It says you unsent a message. So if they're not updated to iOS 16, they still might be able to see the message. But by this time, I'm sure everyone's gonna be updated to iOS 16 soon enough. So they won't be able to see that unsent message. But I also wanna show you how to edit a text message as well. So say I type hi again and like that, and then I hold down on that button again, I can actually edit this message and change what I wanna say. So I can say, hi, how are you instead? And now that text message will be edited and I just click send right here. And now it's gonna be edited. It's gonna show that it's been edited and it might show that on the person you sent that to as well. But this is how you can unsend and edit a text message on iMessage. Like I said, I'm glad they brought this feature to the iPhone. It's about time. It comes in very handy if you mess up a message or need to unsend something. And say someone sends you a message in a different language or if you wanna translate your text message to a different language, you can do that as well on iMessage. All you have to do is hold down this text and go to translate right here. And now you can choose what language you wanna choose right now. We have Spanish right now, where it's gonna say, hola, como estas, based on hi, how are you? You can copy this translation, you can choose a different language, and you can add to favorites or open and translate itself. And you can definitely do this any way you want with this iMessage and just translate any text message or see what they're saying in a different language through this feature on your iMessage app on your iPhone 14. Right now, we're looking at one of the photos I took of my Apple Watch. And with iOS 16 and my iPhone 14, you can actually lift a subject from that photo and and send that without sending the background. And this might be confusing at first, but I wanna show you how this works. So you're gonna see if I hold down on the Apple Watch, it's gonna lift from the background here. And if I let go, I'm gonna have the option to copy this right here. Now I wanna show you what this is all about. If I go to my text messages right here and then go to this specific person and click paste right here, 
it's gonna show the iPhone or the Apple Watch that I lifted from that photo without the background and I can send that to this specific person without having to show the background. This is a super cool feature that is brand new on iOS 16 and it's a way you can just lift certain subjects from that photo so you can have that shown without the background. I think it's super cool. Now you can get to see this without the background. I definitely enjoy it. It's a brand new feature for iOS 16 that I definitely recommend trying out. Also scan certain texts and subjects from photos using your text message as well. And I wanna show you how to do this. If we hold down right here and click this right here, this icon, you're gonna see that my camera pops up and say I wanna scan a certain text of an object that I have, like this deodorant right here. All I have to do is just put my camera right here and now you can see that Harry's pops up, which is the name of this product. All I have to do is now that this has popped up in my text message, I can just click send right here. And if I wanna scroll down and choose odor or sweat control as well, I can choose that and just click send as well right here. And this is one way you can actually scan any products or text right from your camera on your iPhone 14. I definitely recommend trying that if you wanna show someone a product that you're buying or any other text that you wanna show on a picture, you can scan that and send them directly through your iMessage like I just did on my iPhone 14. With the iPhone 14 and iOS 16, there's new Safari features as well, like shared tab groups. So essentially what shared tab groups is, is you can actually plan a trip with friends or shop on a couch with your partner and you can share all your tabs in one location on your Safari app. And I wanna show you how this works. So if we click this icon right here, it's gonna take me to this specific page on Safari. If I wanna add a new one, I can just click that plus button right here. If I go back and click two tabs right here, now you're gonna see I have my tab groups. I'm just gonna show two tabs and I have the option to turn this to private if I like. So if we click private, essentially what this does is it turns on a private browsing mode. And Safari won't remember the pages you visited, your search history or your autofill information after you choose a tab in your private browsing mode. So if you want only information that you can see that you're looking up on Safari and you do want that private to yourself, you can create a private browsing mode simply by doing what I just showed you on your iPhone 14 Safari app right here. And if we go back, you can see you can create a new empty tab group or new tab groups from these two tabs right here. So if we click that right now, a new tab group pops up and I can title that. I'm gonna say me slash personal right here. And now that's gonna be my new tab group and these two tabs are gonna be in that specific tab group. I don't have any information in them. I was just showing you the Safari page, but if you wanna have some information that you wanna share and create in a new tab group, you can just create that right here on Safari. And now that's gonna be your new tab group right here. And also in addition to this, you can see that my browser or my search bar is at the top of my screen. In previous iOS updates, they moved it down here. And I wanna show you guys, you have the option to choose between where you want your search bar on your Safari tab. And all we have to do is just go out of the app, go on settings right here. And then we can scroll all the way down till we see Safari right here. And now we have the option to choose which way we wanna see our search bar. We have it at the top or the bottom. Like I said, I prefer the top, but in previous iOS updates, they moved that to the bottom. So if we move it to the bottom right here and then go back to Safari, you're gonna see that now the search bar is at the bottom of the screen opposed to the top. This is completely up to your preference. I prefer the top, but you just know you can change that in the settings of your iPhone 14. With iOS 16 and the iPhone 14, you can now choose and schedule when you wanna send emails to specific people. And I wanna show you a little bit about how this works. So if we go to my mail app right now, I'm just gonna choose any random email, just like this one from Apple right here. And I click reply right here. I'm gonna click reply. And I'm gonna start typing right here. I'm gonna click hi there. And this is pretty cool because if you wanna send an email, but you don't wanna choose a specific time, you wanna send that out. You don't wanna send it right in the moment. You guys have the ability to do that with iOS 16. So I just typed hi there right here. I'm gonna hold down this arrow right here. And now I have all these options to them. So I can choose send now, send at 9 p.m. tonight, 8 a.m. tomorrow, 8 a.m. Monday, or I can click send later and I can choose a specific time I wanna send that email out. So like I said, if you don't wanna send an email out right away and you wanna have a certain set date or time that you send that email out, you can now do that with the mail app on iOS 16. And I definitely recommend using that if you plan on using this new feature with your iPhone 14. With iOS 16, we also have a new family sharing mode. So essentially with family sharing, you can actually share and create accounts for children or your parents right from the start. And you can set your preferences for age appropriate media, screen time, location sharing, and more. And you can choose all these options right here in the settings tab on family sharing. And as you can see, we're on the page right now. And I wanna show you a little bit of the features that this comes with 
with. So for example, if we go to family checklist right here, you're going to see these options we can choose from and you can take advantage of all the family sharing features available to you. You can share with your family medical IDs, you can share your location, your iCloud Plus subscriptions and your recovery contacts right here from family sharing. And on top of that, you can also add as many family members as you want to this. I only have my mom and my dad and I'm going to send invites to them right now. And as you can see, once I send that invite to my dad right here, it's going to say, join the family. And he is inviting you to join a family so you can share your media purchases and subscriptions. And all you have to do is just click send right there. And you can invite others or create a child account. If we click create a child account, for example, now this is going to have certain restrictions on what you're using and sharing with your family. This account will be a part of your family until the child is at least 13 years of old. You must be an adult or the child's parents slash legal guardian to provide consent. Since I don't have a child, I'm not going to dive in and set all of this up. But if you have a family and you have a child, you can actually create a child account with this family sharing icon and family sharing with iOS 16. You also have all these options down here like subscriptions, for example. Like right now we have just iCloud. We go back, we have location sharing. I have none shared at the moment, but you can share your location with your family and your location will be shared with all your members, including any new members that are added later. And you can start sharing your location to the people I showed and shared with my family sharing settings on my iPhone, like I just previously showed you. So we click share location. Now my mom and my dad and whoever I invited are gonna be able to see that location that I'm located at at the moment. And you can also set up purchase sharing as well. So for example, if we click on purchase sharing, you can share your payment methods, allow purchase sharing and keep all your accounts separate. I'm going to set this up later, but these are great options you can use if you have a family linked under the same iCloud. And even if you don't, you can share all this information like your location, purchase history, and subscriptions right here through your iOS 16 update with your iPhone 14. Now, the next app I want to show you is one that's already pre-installed when you get your iPhone 14, and that is the Contacts app. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm showing you the Contacts app as one of our favorite apps for the iPhone 14, but with iOS 16, the Contacts app actually offers a brand new feature that I wanted to show you all, and I think it is super cool. So if we go to Contacts right here, you're going to see it's a normal Contacts app that you've seen throughout the years with your iPhone, but right here, this is the brand new feature I want to talk about where it says, four duplicates found. So with the contacts app now with iOS 16, you can actually merge duplicate cards for a contact and combine the cards, keeping all the unique information in a single card for that specific contact. So now when you have multiple contacts that are under the same information, you can actually merge those so it doesn't take up any data or storage on your iPhone. So let's check it out. If we click view duplicates right here, you're gonna see four contacts that I found and I can merge them all together so there's no more data and less contacts you have right on your list. So let's click merge all for example right here and let's click merge duplicates so now all of those duplicate contacts that i had in my iphone are now merged together so there's no need to worry about having the same contact with the same information more than once on your iphone 14 and this is a brand new feature i wanted to show you on the contacts app but let's move on to the next app now i hope you enjoyed today's video this is a complete beginner's guide covering the iphone 14 and if you found this video helpful make sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button for more great content like this i also encourage you guys to go to appfindvip.com and subscribe to our email newsletter to get the best mobile apps and games delivered directly to your email inbox. And also go give us a follow on our Instagram at at VIP. We're going to be showcasing the best tips, tricks, and hidden features on the iPhone 14 and all Apple and Android products out there. And I also encourage you guys to go to bestrewardsapps.com to see all these incredible apps like Quick Thoughts and Rakuten that allow you to earn incredible rewards and prizes right at your fingertips. These are all affiliates of ours and they're all great apps that are worth checking out. So definitely check out all these links, you guys. They're going to be in the description of this video. So thank you guys for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.